We want to have purpose. We want to know that, that our life has meaning, that we're doing something good to help others. The more people know you, the more you can spread a message. Be blessed, not stressed. Hey, God bless you and welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bless Not Stressed, the Christian self-improvement motivational podcast. You're about to listen to the interview I had with Evan Carmichael. And let me just tell you something. It is going to be a blessing for your life. Evan, thank you so much for taking the time being here today. How are you doing today? Good, man. Thank you for the love. Good to be here. Thank you for being here. Hey, listen, so I'm going just giving the audience a little bit of how it is that I got you here. You were mm -hmm. you posted a video on Instagram. And you were okay. talking to someone and you told them, well, they asked you, hey, how do you think I should start getting people into my podcast? And you said, all you need to do is ask. Mm -hmm. So you're doing these questions on Instagram. I went there. I, t I told you, hey, would you be part of the Bless Not Stress podcast? And your answer was, maybe. You said, maybe you need to do something to stand out more. You need to do okay. something. And the moment I saw that answer, I literally okay. grabbed my phone. I started recording myself. I recorded a video. Okay. I was just, you know, shaking. I did it like 30 times just to try to <laughs> get like it, it good okay. to send it to you. And the yeah. moment I send it, you had already gone to sleep. You had told everybody, hey, you know, I'm, I'm getting out of Instagram right now. Okay. So the next morning, you saw the message and you said, let's do it. So thank you so much. This is how we got you here. Thank you for giving me the opportunity of, you know, having you here to add value to all of my listeners. As nice, I like man. to say, you know, this podcast, my goal is to empower as many people as I can. I'm 21 mm -hmm. years old right now. And nice. the way that I do this is, you know, with people like you, entrepreneurs, authors, and, you know, the word of God as well. I do that to the people in my church. So just thank you for being here. I love it, man. And, you know, recognize yourself. For, for you giving me a, a tremendous honor and, you know, super kind words and thanking me, but thank yourself for, for asking the question, right? Like a lot of people don't even ask the question and, and I could have missed your question. Like when I'm doing those IG questions, I don't get to everybody every night and yeah. serendipity being blessed, you know, okay. whatever, like you're, you're the one that comes up and, and then I don't even say yes. Right. Cause lots of people always ask me, Hey, can you come on my show? And so I give you an honest answer. It's like, maybe, I don't know. Like, that's not enough. That, that ask and that question, that's not enough. Cause I don't, I don't know who you are. I don't recognize you. Um, and then, and then you made the video and I remember the video. I did see it the next day. And uh, it's like, I like this guy. So yeah. But a lot of people wouldn't have asked the first question. And then a lot of people wouldn't have made the video. They would have tried five times and said, I don't, I, I'm just too nervous. This isn't good. And then leave. And you said, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do it 30 times until I get it. And then send. So um, I'm honored to be here and, and I want to recognize you for, for the effort and the hustle to make it happen, man. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So let's get started. Listen, one of the things that I read in your book, Built to Serve, um, I have it right here. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying it so much. I'm not done reading it, but that's because I'm enjoying every single part of it. Literally, I started reading the first 12 pages and I had to go back and start again just to see like, wait, did I miss anything right now? It's a right. really, really good book. Now in the book, oh, you say you're an introvert. Wait, and could I, you hold, can you hold it up? Did you like do earmarks and stuff? Inside? No, no, no. Like the, the other way, the, the top. Yeah. Oh, oh okay, yeah. No, okay. You did. Okay. I, okay. I, I, yeah. I got some, some marks there. Okay. Nice. Okay, cool. I love seeing, I love seeing, I'm just curious how people read. Some people like fold the, the pages over. Some people put like sticky notes everywhere. So I'm, I'm so curious. Anyway, go yeah, ahead. I'm, I'm learning question? different ways. In some books, I put the sticky notes and the other ones I, I folded. So, you know, just multiple ways just to try to make sure that it's easy for me to go back to it. Now, in the book, you said you're an introvert. And I'm here thinking, yeah. you, know, you know, you're an introvert. You don't read many books, but you wrote already two books, really great mm -hmm. books. And you're speaking all over the world, talking to so many people in different platforms. What would you say to the person that's listening to you right now that is an introvert, but instead of going um, past, um, past the fear, they're limiting themselves and they're just stopping right there saying, hey, I'm an introvert. Are you an introvert? I'm not. I'm not. Got it. So I think the, uh, the advantage that introverts have is that we're good listeners. And we're also still built to serve. I think, I think humans are built to serve. You want to serve. You want to help helping your fellow man makes you feel good, right? I mean, we've all experienced that in some um, form or another. If you are just by yourself and isolated and you woke up and you felt like, it doesn't matter what you do today. If you had that mindset that like today, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares about the work I'm doing. It's not serving others. It's not touching anybody else's life. 
you're going to have a really unhappy, unpleasant life where even just some, even just an act of kindness, even just helping a woman across the street, an old lady, or buying a coffee from somebody behind you in line, um, any kind of uh, act of goodness will make you feel better. And so it's the same for introverts, right? Introverts also want to serve. We may not be the people who are uh, always the, if you go to, a, if you saw me at a networking event or something, I'm not the life of the party. I am not the guy that's like, hey, who are you? And where are you from? And what are you doing? And I'll, I'm not that guy. That stuff, I, I just suck at that stuff. But um, I want to serve. I want to help. And, and all introverts also, it's just a human thing. Whether you're introvert or extrovert, you want to serve and you want to help. And so whether you're an introvert or not, achieving your big scary dream will come on the other side of all of these fears. So for me, I, I was massively afraid to, if you hit me up 10 years ago, I would have been terrified to come and do this show. Um, I still get terrified when I'm going and doing speeches on big stages. For you, even before we started recording, you said you were nervous and scared <laughs> to do this interview, right? Like all of, and maybe even in messaging me or making that video, you were nervous or scared to do it. All of the great things that you want in life are on the other side of, of your fears. Yeah. And if you tap into the fact that I'm not even doing this for me, I'm doing this to serve, I'm doing this to help, like you're doing this, sure, it helps your show, but it's to reach more people, it's to spread a message, it's you wanna help other people. Uh, anytime I tap into service, it, it reduces the fear, it takes away that fear for me, and um, I remind myself, stop being selfish. Like you're here to try to help people, so go off and try to do that. And that's how you build self-confidence as well, right? Doing those difficult things, you know, pushing yourself through all of that. He watches my content. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> self-confidence comes from doing difficult things, right? Like if you, if you, you know, wrote that question to me and I responded, maybe a lot of people wouldn't ever follow up. Uh, and you did, but if you taught yourself, hmm, maybe, and then you don't do anything, then the next time something is hard, you're basically training the muscle of not feeling confident. This yeah. is a little difficult, so I don't do it. So then the next thing is difficult, you don't do it. And you're training that muscle of, of putting yourself down. And I wanna flip it. I wanna try to teach myself that I do difficult things. And I wanna share that with other people too, that you do difficult things. Like if you were so nervous for this podcast and you came on and, and you asked like, how do we get through it? And I said, hey, press record and let's start talking about it, right? Like let's make it a show. And if you came out and the first thing you did was just vomit all over your microphone, I'm pumped, man. Like, I think that's such a great start. Like if you're so scared that that's what happens and then you still do it, that's how you build confidence, right? Is that the greatest interview? No. Uh, if yeah. you keep doing these interviews and, and you become the next Larry King and you're 500 interviews deep, you can look back on interview number two right now and say, man, I was so nervous. I was so bad compared to what you're capable of. But it's that you started and you did it. And that's the like self pat on the back that you need to give yourself that you jumped into the thing that you were afraid to do. That's how you build self-confidence. I, I agree with that as well. And it's true right now that you're making me think about that because the moment I sent you that video, um, you know, the next day I was waiting for your answer. And I remember that I even, I, I DM'd you and I was like, hey, the, the video probably got buried throughout the night by all the DMs. So I'm just letting you know that I sent you this video. And that's when, you know, that's when you saw it. And after that, after you said, hey, let's do it. Here's, you know, you can um, get in contact with my secretary. The moment you did that, it gave me the confidence to go out there and ask more people. And, you know, I, I went out there and I started emailing more people. So I think that's true. Um, the second thing that you said right now with it, which is being able to go through the fear. And I heard in, in one of your interviews, and I just wrote this down, you said, the path is through the fear. And I think that's very valuable, that people are trying to wait until they're not afraid anymore, not realizing that the path is through the fear. They just need to go and push themselves to do it. So how did you do that in your life? How was it? What was scary? What was so scary for you? What was your fear that you went through it? Um, my biggest fear is disappointing people. My biggest fear is I'm going to let somebody down. My biggest fear is that when I go on stage and I, I'm just not going to give value and people won't find my talk interesting. And then I've, I've disappointed the organizers. I've disappointed the audience. That's my, that's my biggest fear. Um, the two things that helped me are one still service, like, looking at the audience and knowing I can help these people and I need to, or two, 
I do difficult things. I do scary things. That's the identity that I'm trying to build for myself constantly. I will tell myself, I'm Evan Carmichael. I do difficult, scary things. Just because that that's not a good enough reason not to act. Um, I love being people's first guests on their on their shows or second guests or like in the early days because of exactly that one. It gives them the hope and confidence that they can go off and do it with other people. And two, uh, you can use my name to get other people. Like some people have no idea who I am and others will recognize me. And the fact that I was on your show will make it easier for other people to come on your show. And that, that excites me, right? That, yeah. that you can now get your show to have a little more momentum. Uh, you still have to do all the work. I'm just a little tiny piece of that, but that, that gets me excited. At the same time, I'm trying to defeat some of those concepts of like, if a lot of people, if I wrote back to you, I hate that, that, uh, I hate that if I didn't respond well to you, that might've been the end. Like the fact that I gave you a positive response meant that now you're going off and giving other people doing outreaches. Yeah. I could have said, no, man, I hate you. <laughs> Don't ever message me again. You loser. Right? Like not pe people won't often do that, but I could have, right. I could have done that. And then for a lot of people, that might be the end. That might be the, Oh, well, I guess I'm not good enough. So I should quit this. Like, who am I? I'm one guy, right? I maybe I'm having a bad day or something. Um, or I'm just an, I'm just a loser. Like, don't worry about me giving you a negative reaction. And so I think people quit too soon. I'm trying to inject the positivity and the believe and the, the good vibes only. And, and hopefully, you know, in, in, in 20 years, when you're, so, you're the big deal, you give some kid a shot when they say, Hey, can you come on my hologram TV show or whatever <laughs> technology is going to be out by then? Um, you know, pay that forward a little bit, but, um, also don't get discouraged if you don't get the yes, if you don't get the, the, um, positive affirmations from the people you're trying to get on, like you just keep going, you keep going, you keep going. You know, one of the things that has helped me, and I was going to tell you, I was like, this is a really nice book just by, by looking at it. If I was somebody that would judge the book by its cover, I would still get your book. It's just really nice. And it also grabs my, question, grabs my attention about Built to Serve. I wrote a book right now, um, I'm 21 right now, and I wrote a book, and one of the chapters was pick up your towel. Now my book is for Christians and yeah. you know, it's for Christians. It's for people that want to grow personally as well. Mm -hmm. And I put pick up your towel because as a Christian, you think a lot about Jesus and Jesus said a lot. Jesus said, Hey, pick up your cross and follow me. But mm -hmm. an interesting thing that people miss out, which is about serving others is that before Jesus ever picked up a cross, he picked up a towel. And what did he do with the towel? He, he just washed the feet of his disciples, showing mm -hmm. us right there about serving others. So your book, I feel like it's so true and it's going to help everybody because the moment you focus on that about serving other people, you have that motivation to go. You have that motivation to keep pushing. Like you said right now, if you would have said no to me, maybe, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, that would have been the no to me. That would have been, you know, that's it. Let me give up. But I realize that at times you can uh, fail, but just because you failed once doesn't mean that you're a failure. And I feel like the people that are listening right now, they need to know that, that if you failed once, you're not a failure. Um, you know, you got to keep pushing and you got to keep doing that. Now, Built to Serve, what made you write this book? What pushed you to write this book right now? So I was doing a tour last year. I did 90 days across 23 cities. We drove across America um, and I, I spoke in 23 different cities. And I was speaking on, on something else. I was speaking on, um, you know, productivity and, and momentum and belief. And the question I kept getting asked was, Hey, how do I find my purpose? How do I find my passion? How do, how, what do I, what should I be doing? And I said, Oh, that's, that's pretty easy. You just go through the who, the why, the how. And so, well, what's that? And I guided them through it live. And then Somebody else said, oh, pick me and like, pick me and pick everybody wanted to do the same exercise. Like, that's not even what I'm here to talk to you guys about, but okay, let's go and do it. <laughs> um, I think it's, I think it's something that we, we want. We want to have purpose. We want to know that, that our life has meaning, that we're doing something good to help others. We just don't know how to do it. And you don't have to spend $10,000 to hire some coach to help you. And you don't have to spend, you know, years meditating or journaling. Um, it's accessible. It's, it's pretty easy. Uh, just have to go through a simple process. So as I kept doing that in every city, I thought this should be a book because I'm only hitting so many people in, in different cities where if it's a book, it can hit a lot more people. Um, 
And funny story about the cover. You said you like the cover. I actually got into a huge fight with my, uh, my publisher on this where publishers, they, they have their own um, design team to make covers. And in my first book, which was called Your One Word, I never really liked the cover, but we, we ran out of time. I didn't know the process. You know, when you're first getting started, you make a lot of mistakes. So I didn't know how long it took to get a cover design done. And by the time they gave it to me, we basically had to print. So there's only a couple of tweaks that I can make. So for Built to Serve, a little smarter now because I've been through it once, said, I want a nice cover. And we came up with, I don't know, 12 different concepts. And um, they didn't like purple. They said, don't do purple. No, no business book apart from Rich Dad, Poor Dad has ever done well in purple. And I said, I don't know. I like purple. I like, I like, I like how this looks. And so we split test it, right? I ran it. I ran um, different campaigns to compare this versus 11 other designs. And this is the one that won the most. And so I said, you know what? Feels right. It won. Let's go. It's good. It's good. I really like it. It's and, really and it's nice. funny how, you know, a lot of people will tell you their opinions and, and sometimes even experts like these guys publish books for a living saying, don't do this. But I get a lot of positive comments on the cover. And so sometimes you just have to go with what feels right, even if the experts are telling you that it's not going to work. Yeah. So you talked about how your book, it's the who, the why and the how. Mm -hmm. Now, the who I even made an episode, which is the one um, two episodes before this one about that, about that from your book, about the who, okay. how I found my who. And I was just thinking right now, is there, you know, there are some people that are listening in and maybe they go through the questions and, and they don't know the answer. They don't know what their who is. Can somebody just choose the one word? The, the, can they just choose what their most important core value will be and set it as a standard to say, you know what, my most important core value is going to be integrity and I'm going to live up to that and I'm, gonna, and I'm going to push myself up to that. Can they do that? Can they just choose the one word? So, okay. So the backup, I guess, for anybody listening, the who is your most important core value? Yeah. What is your most important core value above everything else? You might have a bunch of core values. That's great. But what's the most important one? And when you figure that out, it allows you to live a life with a lot more intention uh, and stop getting pulled in a thousand different directions that other people want you to do because you know what feels true to you. So that has to come from a real place. Uh, I don't think you can just pick one and say, that's what I'm going to be. It has to come from inside. Uh, I would encourage, I would encourage more prayer. Pray. I think, I think um, people often pray for help. Like, please help me with this. Please take away this problem from me. As opposed to praying for wisdom. Yeah. Pray for wisdom. Pray for guidance. Pray for helping and figuring out what your core value is. Yeah. Right? Just pray properly, right? Don't pray to win the lottery. Pray for guidance on how to figure out your most important core value. And I think if you open yourself up to that and create that channel, um, you're much more likely to be able to find it. I think and people I should like pray for wisdom more. And I feel like it goes around this whole thing about serving. And because, you know, as you were saying that, I just started thinking about from the Bible, who prayed for wisdom? King Solomon. You know, the story goes that God told him, hey, what's the one thing you want me to give you? He could have asked for anything, but he said, Lord, give me wisdom to guide your people. And it's right there connected to, to serving. And um, God did not just give him wisdom, but he gave him wisdom and he gave him the riches. He became one of the wealthiest people, um, you know, in, in, the, in his time. And it's all connected to that, to, to serving other people. And I feel like at times we're too focused on, I want to be the big thing. I want to be the next big thing. I want to be the one, Let, lift my name up instead of focusing about lifting others up. When did you realize that? When did you realize that, hey, you know what? I'm here to lift others up. I'm here to serve other people. I came from the other side where it was more, um, you know, I've got a picture behind me on my wall where it's my mom and my dad and I'm, you know, eight or nine years old here. I guess the podcast listeners can't see that, but this giant picture on my wall. And um, my mom would always, she, she lived a life of service. She was always for her community, always for the people, always trying to do something to give back and help. I had to learn um, to embrace. I used to really fight against ego. I, re I used to really have a hard time with people who were the, the man or the woman, the person up front. Uh, Cause I felt, oh, that person is so egotistical. And I had a hard time with that, but I had to really realize that the more people know you, the more you can spread a message and that it's not about me, like me getting, you know, quote unquote known means that more people know about 
serving and more people know about believe and more yeah. people can take their shot. And so I had to really rewire my brain and thinking around that to have more confidence in myself and fight against um, the drive for like, I don't, I don't fight with ego. I fight on the other side. Like I need to do more because we're so, you could, there's a thing of being um, humble to a fault where then you're not actually building what you could build to serve. Like you could be overly humble and then that prevents you from serving people. Um, but I feel like so, you have the heart for that because you have the heart for that because if you look at you, um, you're, you're so successful right now, but you're still here, you know, doing this podcast with me and you're the, you're the person that stays in the lobby. You know, I was reading your book, you stay in the lobby and you answer the questions of the entrepreneurs. So it's not, and I, and I saw this where people were telling you, you need to get famous to be more effective and to help as many people. But if you look at it, you, you stay true to who you are. And I feel like, you know, sometimes people can miss that as they grow and as they get famous where they forget about serving and they only think about themselves now. Yeah. And I think everybody has the heart. They just lost touch with it. Yeah. When I look at like, what did you, what was your, who, what was your one word? Mine was compassion. Compassion. So, you know, I've gone through this exercise with many, many, many people. And I've never had anybody's uh, who be hate or war <laughs> or like something. It's never negative. It's never something negative. Everybody is good. Everybody wants to be good. Yeah. It's always like compassion or freedom or belief or inspiration or motivation or care or something. It's always positive. Always. I've never had somebody's one word be negative. Um, so that tells me that people are good. They're just out of alignment. They're just not living their life. Like as much as they might be unhappy with the world, they're unhappy with themselves. They're not living their life in alignment with, like if you're ever unhappy, it's because of a lack of compassion. You just yep. need to have more compassion. Like if somebody's throwing hate at you and saying, you are the worst podcast in the world, you just have to have more compassion for them. Like why would somebody hurl some, an insult like that at you? They really hate their life. They're really suffering themselves. It doesn't have anything to do with you. Um, and so same thing for me, anytime I'm not happy in life, it's because of a lack of belief and I need that more. So that's why it's a powerful tool, but I think everybody has the heart. I mean, there might be a tiny percentage of population who have like a chemical imbalance or something and they enjoy serial killing people, uh, but that's not most of us. And um, I think people who, who are not serving and haven't tapped into their heart as much as they could, um, I'm trying to unlock that. And then the second part of the book, which is your why, what is your why and how do people find that? So your why is your purpose and your purpose comes from your pain. Yeah. So whatever the most painful moment in your life was, your purpose is to help other people who currently are like that. So if you think about a time in your life, maybe it was a year ago or five years ago or 10 years ago, where you felt lost, lost, you didn't know what to do, the lowest point, the most painful point, not physical pain like you broke your arm or something, but emotional pain where you felt worthless as a human. You got out of it. You know, you, you're, you're not done climbing. You're still growing. You still want to continue to learn. You know, you're never done learning, but you're way better off than you used to be. What helped you through that process? Because there's lots of people who currently are who you used to be, and they feel like there's no hope. They feel like it's not possible, right? They feel stressed, not blessed. <laughs> and you can help them through, right? With your story and what worked for you can also work for other people. You, you getting out is an impossibility. It was a miracle. It shouldn't have happened. But that's a replicatable miracle. You can now help gift other people that same miracle and show them a better life. And that's the kind of, it's great to buy the coffee for somebody behind you in line. That, that'll make you feel good in the moment, these acts of kindness. But that kind of serving where you're, where you're helping somebody who currently is who you used to be, that, that you'll be 120 in an old age home sitting on your rocking chair and that will still get you fired up. That's for and, life. And I feel like this, is, this brings so much clarity to the person that went through a hard moment in their life and they are scarred. And, and right now they feel like they're just bad and they feel like, man, you know, my life is worthless. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to find your purpose through the pain that you're going through. So how can they overcome that pain? I'm thinking uh, maybe, maybe you can put this into good words. Um, <clears throat> the way I say something like that is you, you're going to be defined by that event that happened. 
either in a negative way or in a positive way, but it'll define you. If you choose to, to succumb to it, then you're, you're negative and crusty and, and upset and feel taken advantage of. And that you carry that negativity with you for life. You could flip it and say, no, this, this defined me, but in a good way, because I'm going to make sure that this never happens again to any other human a lot. And you flip it. I like how you said scarred. I'm trying to think of like what the opposite, like you took stress to blessed. What rhymes with scarred so that it's like in the positive way. Oh, you're going to have me thinking. I don't we gotta, You got to play with it. Right you, you got the mind for it. You got the mind for it. DM me later. Say scarred to something. Um, <laughs> so, so that, that is the answer. It's recognizing that this thing that's happened to you right now that feels overwhelming and negative and impossible. You're then going to go help other people who are currently facing this. Like you're gonna be an inspiration to other people. That, and that might be five people, 10 people, a million people. Your story will be an inspiration as you get through this. So it's constant. Whenever, you, whenever you're at the lowest of lows, it's, it's thinking service, service, service. It will always bring you back to a, a happier place. And when you're in a happier place, you can do what much more good. You're not gonna make, you never make great decisions from a place of lack from a place of despair, from a place of desperation, from a place of negativity, from a place of um, even hate or anger. Like your decisions are not clear. That's not who you are. That's not who you want to be. That's not what you're proud of. And so those decisions uh, will not serve you. Flipping it to say, I can help people with this story. Then that allows you to start getting aligned on a better path. And as I speak to people that, you know, have been broken or I speak to people that have gone through painful moments and, you know, whenever I'm talking to them, I tell them, hey, you know, I know that I have not experienced what you have experienced. I know that I have not gone through, you know, I haven't lost, um, you know, my dad or my mom. I haven't lost these people. I haven't been hurt that way. So I cannot say that I feel exactly what you're feeling. But what I do tell them is that they do have a chance of connecting more with other people that have gone through the same thing more than me, because that's what they have gone through. And they can say, look, I know what you feel like. So this is, this is very important because I feel like this is how people take, you know, the thing that they went, the, the thing that they thought that was going to break them to make them into the person that, you know, that's going to help so many people. So I, yeah. I, in, in this book, there's just so many gems. This is, you know, a book that I recommend to a lot of people. It's really good. So, you know, props to you. That was a really good book there and it's going to help a lot of people. Um, before we go though, I have one goal, which is to um, make the YouTube channel for the Bless Not Stress, you know, started up already. I did this podcast a year ago, um, or I'm about to reach a year right now in August. You started your YouTube and I was looking at some of your pictures there and I felt very inspired, very motivated because you started in 2009 with, yeah. I believe, like 40 something and 10 years later, you're almost at 2 million. Right now, you're already at 2 million. So how can I create that and, and make it successful? How can Bless Not Stress become the next, you know, Evan Carmichael in the YouTube? So what I would do is bring on uh, guests. I would have a multi-pronged strategy. So you're bringing on guests that you personally care about. Like bring on guests that if you're reading their book or there's just something about them that you really like. Um, I would make sure on those episodes to ask them questions that actually help you. Don't think about your audience. Think about you. So in this last question, you're doing it, right? And yeah. that, hey, how do I grow my YouTube channel? Now it's about you. And in helping you, it also helps the audience. Yeah. So Bring on, bring on guests now who you care about, who you want to learn something from and turn it into a unique podcast that they're not going to get anywhere else because it's your questions. Two, I'd be making videos of you sharing your story, documenting your journey. Um, you have some lessons that you have learned already, but you're still learning. You're still trying to figure stuff out. You're still like, this could have been an episode where I just, how did I get Evan Carmichael on my podcast? That's an episode, right? How do I reach out to people? That's an episode. So people can follow you on your journey. And just like you, you look at my pictures and said, that's inspirational. People will look at you and say, wow, that's inspirational. I'm, I'm 21. He's doing that. I can start, right? Yeah. So you start showing me the process. And then the third thing I would look at is, is doing some coaching and bringing people on who are your audience, who are listening to you, who are subscribed to you and offering to help them, like help oh. them get blessed, not stressed. And they'll come on and talk about whatever problems that they're going through and you go and you help them out and you give them even, even listening is, is value. Like you might be the only person that they've, who's, who's ever really listened to them. Even, 
praying together is value. Like you may not, you don't have, don't stress about, don't stress, don't stress about having an answer to tell them you need to go do this in your life. Cause you may not know yet, but just holding space for them, just listening, just praying with them, uh, might be the, the greatest gift that you could give them. And so those three series interviews, your thoughts and, and the process, and then the coaching one-on-ones with people, and then just making content and seeing what works. Thank you so much, Evan. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you guys for listening as well. This has been a blessed, not stressed. This has been a blessed podcast with Evan Carmichael. If you want to get his book, you can get it. Evan, where can they get it? Uh, Amazon for the regular book. If you want to sign copy, you can get it off my website, evancarmichael.com. And the cool thing is that Evan will actually send you a bunch of stuff just to study with it. I have it in my computer. I am writing down as he's asking the questions as well. So don't, don't miss this. Go get Built to Serve. We're here to serve as many people as we can. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. And remember, be blessed, not stressed. If you want to see another awesome interview I did, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.